Welcome back! My name is Simon Paganini and continue on the presentation of the Dynamic Positioning Block Diagram. In this lecture I focus on the wind and how it interferes with the dynamic positioning system. The wind is the only environment force which is measured with the help of a wind sensor. For the measurement of the wind speed and wind direction at this moment we can divide, we can divide the wind sensors into two types. In the static one based on ultrasonic principle and the mechanical cube and vane type sensor. Both are designed to be used within the hardest environment conditions. The measured wind speeds need to be scaled to a common level, normally 10 meters above the sea level. This is because a wind speed increases with height from the surface. There are several reasons uh, to explain this tendency. First, especially in the middle latitudes, the pressure gradient increases with height. A second reason is due to the surface friction, especially near the ground, the wind speed is lower. And third, due to the air density. Dense air requires a greater force to move it at the same speed as a less dense air. With air density decreasing with height, it is easier to move the less dense air at the higher speed. And for this scaling, you can use a formula or just this table with the height coefficients. Ok, let's make an example. A vessel has two wind sensors. Wind sensor number one measures 10 meters per second in 20 meters of height, while wind sensor number two measures 10 meters per second in 3 meters of height. Vincent sensor number 1 has a height coefficient of 1.18, so in the measured 12 meters per second divided through 1.18 give a scaled wind speed of 10.2 meters per second. While wind sensor 2 has a height coefficient of 1, means the scaled wind speed is 10 meters per second. This data is then tested if it's in the expected range and if the data is being updated, means not frozen. The data is being stored or let's say hold because if the operator switch off all wind sensor, the last used measurements uh, will be used in the DP system until the operator select the wind sensor again or change the value uh, manually. The noisy wind measurements need to be filtered. Normally a short filter time of 5 seconds is applied. Some manufacturer however let the TPO the possibility to change the filter time. For a vessel with a good wind model and a good tuned TP system this is not required. But what kind of filter is being used? For the most TPOs, to say it's an average filter which takes the average of the last 5 seconds, in our example after 5 seconds we have an average of 10.2 meters per second, in the 6th second we have 10.1 meters per second, in the 7th second 10.1 meters per second etc. would be good enough. But in reality the TP system using a low pass filter. How that works, I will try to explain as easy as possible. We have the measurements, which are noisy. If we look closer, we would like to have a smooth curve, like the blue dotted line and the peaks removed. As we can see, the curve is a wave and therefore periodic. It repeats itself, so it's like running in circle. Now we can project every point of the waves on a circle. One period is exactly one full circle. The same applies for the much smaller noise wave. The big circle turns very slow, while the small wheel has a very high revolution per minute in order to make the same distance, like the big wheel. In the science world they don't call it RPM, they say it's radian per second while around 0.1 radian per second is 1 rpm. Now, if we add all wheels on the axis, we have close to zero the big wheel with the low rpm, therefore the low radiance, therefore the low frequency. 
and on the high end the small wheels with the high RPM, therefore the high radiance, therefore high frequency. The trick is now to get rid of the part by cutting off the part and leftovers are only the frequency data with the low frequency. Project the pack into the wave, you straight away recognize that the, the filtered data here, the thick blue wave, is delayed illustrated. That's because the filter needs time to analyze the raw data. This so called filter time. Now you can say, let's make the filter time uh, very short to, re to reduce the delay. That's possible, but then the filter data is not as precise as it, if it would be with the longer filter time. Okay, that's basically it. If you want to know more about the low pass filter, you'll find enough videos on YouTube about it. Back to the diagram. The wind is finally filtered and the wind speed is then squared, means wind speed multiplied with wind speed and forward to the wind model, together with the wind direction. The wind model uses a set of wind coefficients for various angles of attack to calculate the wind force as a function of wind speed and direction. The wind model errors can be caused by inaccurate wind sensors, turbulence, inaccurate profile caused by change of trim, change of profile, while some manufacturer let the operator adjust the wind area depends on the operational mode and change of draft. Concerning the turbulences, there are very interesting science paper about fluid dynamics around platforms, wind farms and fixed structure etc. And something some captains and clients don't want to see, but sometimes would be better to switch off the wind sensor and use manual input. I know. That's most of the time against the CAMO, the Critical Activity Mode, the TAM, the Task Appropriate Mode or the ASOC, the Activity Specific Operating Guidelines. For those of you who have never heard of it, uh, these are guidelines in accordance with the IMCA recommendation to present to the Dynamic Positioning Operator a guidance in a quick reference tabular format. The Critical Activity Mode, in short, CAMO shows how to configure the vessel DP system, including power generation and distribution, propulsion and position reference system. The TAM, on the other hand, the task appropriate mode, is uh, to the configuration that the vessel DP system may be set up and operated in, accepting that the single failure could result in exceeding of the worst case failure and could result in a blackout or loss of position. The ASOC, in the other hand, are set out operational, environment and equipment performance limit necessary for a safe DP operation while carrying out a specific activity. In summary, CAMO shows how to configure the DP system. The TAM can be used when the worst case failure can result in a loss of position and the ASOC is used for a specific DP operation. So, back to switching off wind sensor. Let's say, for example, the vessel is along a platform and the wind acting full on the vessel passing below the top side while all wind sensors are covered from the top side. The error force or current will build up and as soon as the wind sensor catch the wind again, the vessel will overcompensate for it. Or another situation, if you have a really gusty wind on a high level and you see that the thrusters are starting to oscillate, then it's easier to switch off the wind sensor and use a manual input of the average wind gust. Back to the wind model, which consists of three tables of coefficients. One for surge, one for sway and one for your direction, covering 360 degrees of the vessel. Here an example. There will be normally only one set of wind coefficient, but on vessel changing the draft drastically during a DP operation there can be set of different drafts. When we know where the wind is coming from, we can pick out the coefficient uh, for that direction and calculate the force for the three axes as the 
coefficient, coefficient multiplied by square of the wind speed divided through 9.81. Because the wind table is in kilonewton, to get it to tons, we have to divide it through 9.81. Okay, let's make an example. The wind is coming from the starboard bow, let's say 45 degrees, relative with uh, 10 meters per second. If we compare it with the diagram, the coefficients make sense. In terms, the vessel is pushed uh, backwards in sway, the vessel is pushed uh, to the port side, and also the heading is influenced. Now, you may already recognize that there is something strange with the degree in the wind tables, which are completely unlogical from a nautical perspective. But this manufacturer using zero degrees on the stern of the vessel and going counterclockwise to uh, 360 degrees. Which means 90 degrees is from the starboard, 180 degrees is from the bow and uh, 270 degrees is from the port side. Which means if the wind changes to starboard, the, the degrees are going down, not like we are used to it, up and vice versa. In our example, um, the 45 degrees from the starboard bow are converted 135 degrees for the wind table. Now, uh, we take the coefficient from the table and calculate the wind force. The coefficient multiplied by square of the wind speed divided through 9.81. As a result, we have a, to compensate 54 tons in sway, 10 tons in surge and a momentum of 924 tons per meter for yaw. So the combined force for the position keeping would be uh, 55 tons in order to contract changes in the external force as soon as they are detected, rather than first allowing the vessel to drift away from the required position, the calculated wind force are straight feet forward as the additional force demand, also the wind force assigned to the vessel model. The vessel model is an estimator. In order to give a good prediction, the estimator collects all relevant data. Here an overview of some of the data. And also the wind uh, force can be found. Alright, that's for now. Thanks for watching. Now you know, know more about the wind data and how it's processed in the TP system. Watch the other movies if you want to know more about, uh, about it. See you later. Bye.